Salam everyone and welcome to the Muska Show. All right, so in today's podcast episode, it is the first podcast episode, by the way. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I can't even explain to you how excited I am. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Like, I have my own office. Uh, it's a bedroom that we're using as an office. And yeah, if you didn't listen to my intro episode, I would highly appreciate it if you could tune into that as well. I am pretty much discuss the format of the podcast, why I created it, and like what you can expect from me in terms of like the posting schedule. So yeah, inshallah, we're going to try and create this episode. Was it? I'm just... We're going to try and release weekly episodes, inshallah. And yeah, I'm just going to do my best to be regular. I'm going to do my best to post regularly so that this can actually be, you know, a good podcast. And we can have the longer, lengthier discussions about life for us Muslimas. So... Before we get into the topic, I would really appreciate it if you could follow, like, and subscribe. It would mean so much for me. Um, this is a new podcast, so it would really help me grow. Each like, comment, follow, subscribe, it like really exponentially helps the channel, the podcast. Like it's like an amazing way of like letting me know that what I'm creating is benefiting you or entertaining you and it just like helps market helps to tell the algorithm that we're doing a good job and then more people can listen and tune in so it would really mean so much to me um if you haven't checked out my jewelry shop muska jahan jewelry i will be linking that to lo below 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 and i really hope you guys check it out because i have i currently have a line of head chains and hijab pins uh, perfect for those of you who are attending like evening events, weddings, um, parties, baby showers, like so many ways that you can wear these beautiful pieces of jewelry and they are really affordable. I would say the majority of the items in my shop have free shipping. So I'd really appreciate if you could check out my shop, see what we have in store right now. There's going to be new product released pretty regularly. Um, I would really love it if you could subscribe to sorry follow the instagram page because currently that's going to be where we announce the new product launches and yeah i'm so excited because right now it's like the head chains and they're very beautiful gems but we're gonna also have so many other types of styles and designs because currently everything's gold but we're gonna have silver we're gonna have bronze like this like vintage um tarnished like vintage look looking bronze inshallah and it's gonna be so nice like we're gonna have so many different designs so make sure to check it out follow the instagram page and yeah without further ado we're gonna go ahead and get into the first episode topic so in today's episode we're gonna be talking about being a stay-at-home mom stay-at-home mother housewife with kids well currently i have one kid inshallah i would like to have at least another we'll see but yeah, stay at home mom. It's interesting how like, if you look throughout history, women who have children, they tend to stay at home. They tend to uh, do what they can to, you know, support the family unit. I would say that majority of the time throughout history, you know, women staying at home was like the way that things ran. Maybe the stay at home mom, the housewife would do the cooking, the cleaning, Maybe she had a garden, she had multiple kids um, running around, and even though she wasn't like, you know, working to like entertain the kids all the time, they would kind of do their own playing, entertaining. You know, she was keeping an eye on them or had an idea of like where the kids were at least. <laughs> Things have certainly changed. I don't think kids play in the street by themselves anymore unless they're a certain age. I think we've all seen too many of those like crime shows, true crime shows. So much different from like how I grew up because I grew up, I mean I was born in the 90s so I guess 
I grew up in the late 90s and the 2000s. And yeah, sometimes we would play outside without adult supervision. We would, you know, run our hands through the dirt, play with whatever, bugs, worms, insects. <laughs> I was, you know, I, I wasn't like a wild child, but you know, I had fun. So yeah, I was the oldest. I have two sisters and a brother. Let me know how many siblings you guys have. Do you, are you the oldest? Are you the middle child? The youngest child? What are you guys? And what was your growing up situation? I'm very interested to see that in the comments because I do think it affects your personality and everything, but we're talking about being a stay at home mom. So yeah. so. For me, because like, I feel like it's like a natural thing to like want for mothers. It's kind of like the natural step to go, I would say. When I was discussing a potential marriage with my husband, who was not my husband at the time, obviously, one of the things that I set as a condition before we got married was that that if we were to have children, inshallah, like I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom because I think it's really important to uh, be around your kids and be able to, you know, teach them the life lessons, raise them in the Islamic faith. I just think that, you know, a child really benefits from spending that quality time with their mother um, as well as the father. Um, Alhamdulillah, like I have the best husband. He really takes care of things. He takes care of me. He takes care of my son. He is really like the ideal and like I'm, I'm just so blessed to have him in my life. He really took on the father role very naturally <laughs> and one of the things that I really liked about him drove me to marry him is the fact that he's really good around kids and it just it just comes very naturally to him. So yeah, so when we were discussing uh, the potential for marriage, I was like, I don't want to be in a position where I'm like forced to work in order to like pay the bills. Like I'm <laughs> basically looking at him being like, I am looking for a provider, <laughs> provider, protector, husband. And yeah, that was the condition that I set. And you know, even Islamically, you know, that's kind of like what the husband is meant to do. It's kind of what a lot of us women look for when we're looking for potential spouses. So yes, that was a condition that was set. And then, you know, we were married for a few years before we had our child. And yeah, we were like three years into the marriage and then in, got pregnant, left my job. I actually left my job before I was pregnant, but that's a whole nother story. It was a good job, but I just really wanted to like enjoy my pregnancy, if that makes sense. Um, and then shortly after, you know, the world changed because it was 2020. So that's a whole nother episode. Um, but yeah, I was pregnant, had the child, and I am so happy to say that, like, I've been with my son and I'm able to, you know, change his diapers, feed him, take care of him and just be with him and be like that emotional support that he really needs at this stage, especially at this stage, because right now he's a toddler. You know, there's so many studies that show that when you're good with your kids, when you're around your kids, um, especially in the formative years, I don't know how long that age range lasts, but is it the first seven years? When the child is born up until eight years, those are considered the formative years. So yeah, I'm really glad that I can offer that to my son. and. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. I would say that up until we were like, up until I was like a teenager, she was a stay-at-home mom. But I mean, she still does the stay-at-home mom duties, like a lot of the house work. <laughs> um, but you know, her youngest child now is alhamdulillah like 18 years old. So the kids are grown, they're still in the house, but my mom is not as, it's, it's not as like labor intensive as, uh, when you're with your with a newborn, which um, you know, growing up, I saw her handle it pretty well. I would say, <laughs> considering she had four children, so yeah, I'm so happy that I have her in my life. You know, my mom is amazing. I see her as a role model. She was same as my dad too, but this episode is about stay at home moms, okay? <laughs> um, and he he's amazing too. Um, I had a wonderful childhood, wonderful parents, so. 
yeah, seeing my mother raise us, my dad would go to work. Um, he loves working and I think, you know, it fulfills him and he also knows that he's providing for the home so that way my mother could stay at home with us kids. Seeing that and seeing how my mom, you know, conducted her daily routine and the way that she would handle us as kids in terms of like, you know, being the main, what is that? I don't want to say disciplinarian, but I guess that's the word for, you know, she was the one that set the boundaries most of the time, um, letting us know, okay, you can do this, but not this. Um, she wasn't super strict or anything. She was pretty chill. <laughs> but if you tested her, she would let you know. <laughs> so yeah, you know, having a, an amazing uh, set of role models, my parents, um, kind of led me to the decision to be the stay-at-home mom. And, you know, alhamdulillah, like, I'm so happy that I have this opportunity. So now that I've set the foundation for what influenced me to be a stay-at-home mom, we're going to talk about the reality of this um, lifestyle. So I would say that, you know, when actually before I even had my son, when I was pregnant, just like staying at home all day, I didn't even know what to do with myself. Like it really took some time to be able to like, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because like growing up, there was always a routine. There was always some sort of schedule that was decided by someone else, uh, you know, going to school and making sure to catch the bus on time. You know, even college, there's classes that you need to show up for, you need to study, there's tests, like there's always something that someone else has created for you, like a deadline or a schedule that you need to show up for or prepare for. So um, just completely being able to like run my own day was so like new to me that like it actually gave me so much anxiety because there were so many things that I wanted to do, but um, I was never given this amount of freedom. So that was interesting, but alhamdulillah, like I'm glad that I had that time during my pregnancy to kind of like figure myself out because even after my pregnancy, I still hadn't quite figured myself out. I would say that now that my son is a year and a half, um, I've kind of settled into this role if that makes sense and I run my day and I'm not like as anxious or stressed or like putting pressure on myself like I go to sleep at night feeling like I've had a productive day if that makes sense so I don't know if you're like me but like I I wouldn't say I'm as I'm like the most industrious person but um if it's the end of the day and I can look at my to-do list and um I know that, you know, I've created some sort of progress. I go to sleep feeling pretty good about myself. So if you are like that, I imagine most people are like that. You, you want to feel like you made some sort of progress that day. Um, it just helps you feel like you deserve the sleep that you're about to have. And you wake up and you feel refreshed, if that makes sense. So that is like one reality, just like learning how to conduct your day. Um, when my son was actually born, you know, he's the one that sets the schedule. He was the one that decided like how many times I woke up at nighttime to feed him and soothe him. So that was interesting. You know, he's finally at the point where he's sleeping mostly through the night. Every once in a while, you know, they wake up, they're toddlers, I guess. I, I imagine that's going to be a thing. Hopefully not too often, <laughs> even throughout childhood I guess just another thing that comes along with being a parent so but yeah so much different from like the newborn stage yeah going from like not having a schedule at all to like the newborn schedule where you're like you're you're feeding them every two three hours and then now that he's he weaned himself by the way that can be in a whole other episode breastfeeding so much that you don't even <laughs> know that you're going to deal with. But, I mean, he did pretty good. I'd say that we did pretty good on that. Um, but yeah, he actually weaned himself off, which 
put me in a very interesting position um, in certain ways that was easy on me in certain ways it was like oh what do I do so um, but yeah now now that he sleeps through the night mostly and he's not waking up every few hours like I'm able to basically I can pretty much predict how he's gonna you know what time he's gonna fall asleep when he's gonna wake up so I now that you know I'm more mature and you know more used to having like this free form uh, schedule I feel more confident about like making my own schedule running my own day I've learned so much over the past two years two and a half years I guess um, about like cleaning housework how to maintain the house in a way that works for me and is like streamlined I guess that's another reality <laughs> dealing with you know maintaining the house and I feel like that can be a whole other whole other episode I can share with you guys like my tips on like how I do my best to keep a clean house. Right now I have a toddler so toddlers like to leave a lot of crumbs everywhere. I vacuum pretty regularly and he's currently not like a messy child. Yes we do have the crumbs but other than that he doesn't really he's not at that stage where he's like destroying things or making messes just for the sake of making mess so I guess I have that to be thankful for but um, I would say you know it's pretty manageable at the moment so yeah that can be its whole other episode but that's another reality is like keeping up after the toddler making sure they're not getting hurt hurting themselves or messing with things that they shouldn't be and somehow keeping a clean house while you're doing that <laughs> if you are having you know any sort of struggle with the fact that you're raising kids I mean right now I have one kid I can't even imagine what it would must be like to have multiples <laughs> I'm not even in that world yet <laughs> but there's just, I, I feel like when you you know every time you see like jokes about transitioning from the f no children to the first child they always say that that's like the hardest jump and then after that you kind of just adjust with each additional child but yeah they say that from zero to one is like the hardest and then from one to two is you know kind of hard as well because you're not just looking at one child you're looking at multiple right you might not be outnumbered yet <laughs> between you and your spouse but it's a whole other ball game because the one is a little bit older unless you had twins where was i going with this but yeah maintaining a clean house while you have a toddler it's like spinning plates like you're constantly spinning the plate each plate and while you're focusing on another plate, another plate is like kind of slowing down. So you need to keep that one spinning. And you know what? Sometimes it's difficult. Like there are sometimes there are some days where I'm like, I literally clean the whole day. And if I were to take a picture of the house, it would look as if I had not done anything at all, if that makes sense. And those days sometimes are hard. So if you're a stay at home mom and you're having a hard time, even though like, Technically, you're in the house all day with the kid. Sometimes you're just gonna have those days where maybe you're tired. Maybe, you know, it's that time of the month and you just need a nap, an extra nap. Or maybe you're also pregnant. You just need that time to yourself. Or maybe you just wanna have like a break. Or maybe your toddler just decided to tornado through the living room. Like there are gonna be those days where you're overwhelmed and even though you're doing your best, like. It doesn't look like it <laughs> so I think we can all be a little easier on ourselves and for those of you who aren't married I highly recommend making sure that if you are thinking about becoming a stay-at-home mom especially that you do find husbands that are understanding or are not gonna like I don't know I've seen some horror stories of like men who come home from work and like yeah sometimes it is gonna be chaotic especially if you have smaller children you know I, I would say that the mother's job, like her main job is to like make sure the kids are like fed and taken care of. Housework and cleaning are kind of priority number two. Like, like yeah, you, there should be like some degree of expectation that those things will eventually be done. But, you know, sometimes it's overwhelming and, you know, we're emotional creatures. We are human. We are capable of making either errors in judgment or just having those off days so it's always good when you have a spouse that is understanding if they come home from work and they see you know the place is a mess 
It's always nice when they're able to like pick up some things or take care of some tasks. That's a great feeling knowing that like even though you're having a bad day, you always have like that partner that is going to lift you up and going to do whatever they can to make you feel like help you out basically. So, all right. So, now that we've discussed the housework, cleaning, cooking, didn't really talk much about cooking, but that's its own thing. <laughs> um, household management. Now that we've discussed that, let's talk about like the judgment that some of us have experienced by deciding to become stay-at-home moms. First off, like I know that everyone has a different situation. We all have uh, different circumstances. So deciding to stay at home with your kids, yeah, you're kind of, there's a chance that, you know, you're putting off your career goals in order to set aside time to raise your kids and some people just like I know that this word is commonly used but like some people get so triggered <laughs> but yeah I know I know that everyone has their own situation it's funny how like if we're just like minding our own business and making our own decisions to do what's best for our family the outsiders who don't you know pay your bills or should not really have any opinion on how you want to do anything they like to let you know that they disapprove of your choice. I do think it's a little, I would say it's more of like a Western thing where after you have a child, you know, you're on maternity leave for a few months and then you go back to work or maybe you go back to work and then you just like realize like, eh, I don't know if I want to do this. And then you leave. Like there's like almost this expectation that like, you should at least try to go back to work. So yeah, I've had like the most interesting comments come in my direction. Let me know if you've received any comments about your decision to stay at home because I mean, I don't feel like there should be, but like sometimes uh, there are people that will like really talk down to you about the role of the mother, <laughs> being a mother and just being around your kids all day. And I know that a lot of it comes from there's almost like a certain attitude of like resentment towards women who are stay-at-home moms. Like I've seen people comment like, oh, it's such a privilege. Like I wish I could do that. And I understand that like, again, everyone has their own situation, but I don't know. I just feel like even though when people say like, oh, it's such a privilege, they're saying it in a way that just like gives off like the wrong vibe. You know, if I walked up to everyone with the latest iPhone or Samsung and I was like wow you're really privileged wow you're really privileged <laughs> like it would just come across weird like it's just I, I don't think it's a very classy way of I, I feel like that's just like it just comes off wrong if that makes sense like if someone has a lot of money do you go up to them and say wow you're really rich like you're really privileged I mean I know that's like it's like a common way of like talking to people at least online but it's just it's just like an odd thing like everyone has their own you know issues and everyone has their own privileges so I don't really understand the whole attitude behind that but I do know that like there are some women there are some working moms out there who wish they could stay at home but for you know certain reasons they're just not able to maybe the father's not in the picture they're not able to make ends meet unless she's working. So I do understand that. And I try to have sympathy for those people as we all should. And, you know, life's tough. There are certain things that just come your way that you cannot prepare for. But um, it's funny how like you can have compassion for those people, but some of those people will turn around and like be so angry and negative towards you when you're just trying to like do what's best for your family. So. Yeah, let me know if you guys have experienced that because like there are some people that like I don't even talk to anymore because they've constantly made comments about something that I feel like is a natural thing like it's like the natural next step and being able to like take care of your children <laughs> be with them help them deal with their tantrums learn what foods they like get them to try new foods. And I know that technically you can do those things while you are a working mother. But for me, like I I don't even know if I could emotionally handle being able to be a working mom, you know, working nine to five 
and then coming home and dealing with the housework or also like picking up the kid from the daycare like that just seems like a 24 like I motherhood is always a tw already a 24 7 kind of job like that just seems like a whole other level <laughs> yeah I mean if I'm working full-time I don't want to clean I don't really want to cook either when I was working full-time before I was pregnant like I like even without a kid in the picture I was just like overwhelmed I was like I don't even know what I'm doing because one I was not really like raised to be a stay-at-home mom so there's this huge learning curve um, I wasn't really raised in a way that like it took me a while to like figure out like my own like cleaning um, system learning how to cook the foods I like yeah, huge learning curve. So that was overwhelming for me. I can't even imagine having to do that plus working nine to five. But, you know, there are some women out there who enjoy that. That's their thing. They maybe they feel overwhelmed with motherhood and they just need a break from their kids, which is understandable because sometimes I need a break from my kid. But he is the best thing that ever that's ever happened to me. So breaks are very much appreciated, but. I do find myself missing him if the break is too long so but yeah if any of you guys are experiencing judgment like just see this as my way of telling you that you have my permission okay sometimes in order to feel better about things sometimes people you need someone to tell you like hey it's okay right so this is me giving you permission to like take a deep breath okay And just accept the fact that not everyone's gonna likely like you not everyone's gonna agree with the choices you make sometimes people say things out of jealousy ignorance resentment fear a lot of the times the comments are not really about you they are about that person and what they're dealing with inside their own head and I think we should all just we should all be lifting each other up and you know, whatever choices we make in life, like we're the ones that have to deal with them. So, you know, whenever people try to ask you questions that like, you know, they're trying to be judgmental <laughs> or they're trying to nudge you towards going back to work, it is kind of like, it, it feels really invasive. And it's also like, why does this, why is this person so invested in my life and how I want to run my family like I'm not even married to them you know so yeah anytime someone makes a comment on whether or not you're going back to work you know telling you that oh you should feel guilty because you're just a stay-at-home mom you know just taking care of your kids like that person has issues like that is do not take on the emotional load of that because that person has their own issues that they're dealing with if someone wants to diminish the role of how important a mother is uh, to their kids, like that's that's their problem. <laughs> Some people like to say like, oh, you're a freeloader. Oh, you're mooching off your husband. You're privileged. Like, what do you even do all day? Like, you're so lazy. I bet you just like sit on the couch and watch housewives all day. You know, sometimes we do do that, but that's because we need a break, right? Like for me personally, I would rather my break be in the comfort of my own couch. I don't, I can't imagine myself being anywhere else, you know? Or yeah, things such as you wasted your college education by becoming a mother, choosing to spend time with your children. You're ruining any chance you have at a career or financial stability. You're stressing out your husband because he's going to be the sole breadwinner. People are so rude <laughs> so I've noticed that like when people try to like use these type of comments where they think they're being rational they think they're being you know the logical person they're actually not like they're just being rude <laughs> I find that these are the people that don't really understand how important the mother role is for the children and yeah these people have their own issues so I just wanted to attach this part at the end of the episode for those of you who are dealing with the constant judgment because like I would say that you know within like my community that I have over here 
there's not too much of a discussion. I have heard these type of comments made from people who see the world in like a more, I guess like American, maybe more Western perspective. But I do feel like in the West, sometimes they really diminish how important the role of a mother is. And for us, like Muslims, like we, like in our religion, it is emphasized how important a mother is to the children. So I don't know. I feel like I, by not working full time, you know, by being able to do something like this, working from home whenever my child is sleeping or taking his nap or maybe having a snack or whatever, I am able to take better care of my child. If he's having emotional, you know, issues, if he's having a tantrum, we can just sit and talk about it, get through it. Um, he knows that I'm always going to be there for him. Um, I feel like it's better for myself. Like I'm able to take the time to take care of myself. I'm not stressed out. I'm not overwhelmed. I can just do what I need to do to get through the day and take care of the things that need to be taken care of. I don't have to like answer to a boss, a manager, like <laughs> my personality type doesn't really work that way. I love having this sort of situation where I can run my own day, I can make money the way I want to. I think that a lot of stay-at-home moms, like I highly recommend that like whatever you're interested in that you try to find a way to like turn it into a business. Um, make sure that the business that you are doing is not, what is it? There are so many scams out there that target stay-at-home moms, so just be wary of that. I would highly recommend just like doing your own thing. Um, if you have to like pay to get into a business, that's like a warning sign, if that makes sense. I don't think that I wasted my college degree by staying at home. I think that's like a really rude and cruel comment to make because whatever I've learned, like that knowledge, that certificate, bachelor's certificate that I've earned, like, you know, God forbid if something happens, like I can fall back on that in order to make money. Hopefully, you know, the business that I'm trying to do right now takes off so that way I don't have to do that. Also, like whatever I've learned throughout my education, like I can instill that into my child with my own take on it, right? That's just, that's that's a, a rude comment. That's an ugly comment to make. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I'd say that, you know, being me being able to stay at home is, you know, best for my child, best for me, but it's also best for my husband and my family unit. So even when I was working full time, like I was doing the household work as well. So being like having to do the childcare when I'm off from work, the nine to five, the household management, the cooking, the cleaning, everything, like I would probably feel resentful <laughs> if I had to do all of that because I did remember like when I was working nine to five and I was doing that like I was not in a good mood to be honest and if I'm not in a good mood then my husband's probably not going to be in a good mood because happy wife happy life right so by me being at home and having like a more chill structure if my husband wants to spend time with me like I'm here you know I'm not going to be grumpy. I'm not going to be overwhelmed. I'm just going to be in like a calmer state of mind. So yeah. And overall, I think it's just best for the family unit because we're all, you know, fulfilling our roles. My child is just, his role is to play and to learn and to grow. And yeah, that's that. That is the reason. Those are all the reasons that I became a stay-at-home mom. A lot of us have similar paths, similar um was it reasons that we choose this path? And yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys say. Um, again, I know that everyone has their own circumstances. Like everyone has the own way, their own way of like running their lives. So like this is not meant to be like a judgmental video at all. And um, I don't know. I feel like with <laughs> someone's going to get triggered, but I feel like I'm at that stage of life where I'm like, if someone wants to get triggered, like that's their, that's their own journey, I guess. But we're not being judgmental. We're just talking about 
I'm just talking about like why I decided to take this route. That's like the natural route to go. But in the West, people ha make other decisions or they feel kind of like forced to make other decisions. So, but for me and my husband, like this was like a condition that was set before we got married. So thank you guys so much for listening. I really look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. Make sure to follow, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Um, make sure to check out Muska Jahan Jewelry. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Assalamu alaikum. Bye.